What's up guys and welcome to another video. As you can probably see from the title, we're gonna tell you guys everything you need to know about book covers. So specifically what we're gonna talk about is what goes into a best-selling book cover, why are book covers so important. Then we're gonna look at good book covers versus back book covers and then show you exactly how to place an order to have someone to create this book cover for you. So let's go downstairs to the computer and talk about everything. But first thing, catch this. Hey, not me too, man. Oh, not impressed by your performance. All right, we are on the rooftop of our house. Let's just check the view real quick. Uh, we got some rice fields out in Cali. We got some cows. A lady out here that honestly likes to yell. It's really weird. But let's go down our staircase here. Kino Publishing Lifestyle, y'all. Let's go. This is my room. Let us enter. Shoes off. Get on wearing shoes. Let's just sit down and get to it, yeah? Mm hmm All right, let's do a cool transition. An up-swiping transition, how's that? Yeah, swipe yeah? it up, swipe it up. All right. All right, so let's get right into it. First off, why is your book cover so important? First off, people do judge a book by its cover. Literally. And the book cover is the first thing that anyone is gonna see about your book. Mm -hmm. And first impressions are super important. So there are two main things that you want your book cover to convey. So the first thing is you need it to be attention grabbing. It needs to catch someone's eyes uh, and it needs, to, it needs to be like a magnet for someone's eyes so that people look at it and then they give it a chance. That means when someone is scrolling through Amazon or Audible, right? They're scrolling, 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 scrolling and there's all kinds of book covers and then like, oh, sh okay, this one looks interesting. Yeah. You know, and then you like, you have to give them a reason to like want to look into this book now. The first right? thing and the cover is going to do that. But how do you catch people's attention with your book cover? You need it to be eye popping basically. And how do you do that? Big fonts, bold colors, and a compelling stock image. Those are the three things that we normally look for in a good eye-catching book cover. Yes. Yeah, and then the second thing that you need your book cover to convey is professionalism. Professionalism and credibility. So that when people see this book cover, uh, they don't look at it like a joke. Like we're gonna show you some examples of good and bad covers. These bad ones look like jokes. They literally look like it, they're not serious. Like, no, you're not actually gonna use this as a book cover. E like, you're not gonna buy a book with this freaking cover. So that is why your book cover is so super important. And those are really the two things you want to convey with your book cover. Attention grabbing, and then establish credibility slash professionalism. Okay, so now let's actually dive into the computer. We found some examples of good covers and some bad covers really bad covers some really bad ones we'll look at the really bad ones bad. first and then we'll we'll just talk about it yeah okay and then so after that, that we're gonna show you guys exactly how to get these epic book covers for a super low price let's so, go to the computer now we are now inside of the laptop here's the first shitty book cover we're gonna look at yeah okay so let's just no need, yeah no need to sugarcoat it it's, say what it is it's straight trash mm -hmm. pure garbage so let's look at it and what makes it so horrible. like we're not even gonna talk about the keyword they chose okay. parenting daughters so first of all i'm not a designer Full yeah. disclosure, I'm not a designer, yeah. right? But, but I do have two eyeballs. I do have two eyeballs and a brain that can tell a bad cover when it sees it. Yeah. Um, so, look, the, the problem with this one is a complete lack of profession professionalism. Exactly. This, we were talking about the point of it before. Yeah. One is to catch attention. I suppose this could catch attention because it's like a, a pinky color. Um, it has some color, which is good. But it also has to convey professionalism. People don't buy shit from jokes. Uh -huh. they, only, <laughs> they only buy things from someone who they view as credible, yeah. okay? And this, uh, this is conveying exactly zero professionalism yeah. and credibility. Yeah. I so. mean, it just looks like what happened, which is made in like paint.net or Microsoft yeah. Paint. It, seems, it looks like it was made in probably five minutes. You know, if I see someone, a book with this cover, I'm gonna be like, okay, they spent five minutes making the cover. They probably also spent five minutes writing the book. Yeah. Why would I spend money on that? Exactly. It's just yeah. there was no effort put into this, no time. Yeah. So that's the first one. Let's go on the second one. It's the same It's the thing exact that same problem. Just no professionalism. The font is retarded. I don't know. It kind of looks like a Japanese, Chinese style. I'm like, why? Yeah. No, it just uh, makes no sense at all. A lot of these, it's just a bunch of whys. Yeah. Why did you, oh, I just realized. Look at how nutritionist is spelled. Yeah. Nutrition. No, no. Nutrition. Oh, I shit. I didn't even see that. Nutrition. They even made a mistake. That just shows how little effort they put in the book, yeah. in book covers. So whoever made this book cover, like, it's probably, if they see this, they're going to get, like, offended. Uh, but it's just, like, 
it's there's nothing to talk about like this is bad look at you can't deny the spelling mistake on the cover no you can't like that's unprofessional uh, let's go on to the last shitty book cover we don't look at i don't even know what to say about this again it, lo it, it looks like a three-year-old made it yeah it's an image with text look at the font it's and like a that's child it. chosen. Yeah. yeah it's a very childish font it does not convey any sort of high quality professional professionalism at all so i think people get the point now yeah so you these are probably like homemade book covers oh here's another thing we should talk about you should not be making your book covers yourself unless you are a professional designer a really good professional designer yeah so yeah people that, that, professional designers are actually good at yeah no, that is the yeah. only exception uh, however, I know a lot of people, they want to sit here and they want to sit on their high horse and be like, oh, I don't need to pay someone to make a book cover for me. I can make something way better than they can. They don't know what they're doing. You, I'll just make it myself. Like you, like you want to be a tough guy. And it's honestly, it's just sad. It's self-sabotaging. And it's honestly fucking ridiculous. And I can't take you seriously if that's how you're going to run a business. Yeah. Like we are business minds. There are these other self-publishers who are going to sit and just do everything from their grandma's basement and act like they're doing a good job. Look, you can get an incredible book cover made for $10. Why? Why not? What's the reason? As not low to as 5 but 10 to $15. Now, let's not talk more about that. People get it. Outsource. I just wanted to say, uh, do outsource it. On to the good book covers now. Yes, on to okay. the book, good book covers. Let me show this first one here. We're going to learn more from these anyway. Yeah. So here we have our first example of a good one. The first thing you might be thinking is, uh, this is not like, uh, especially eye-catching. It doesn't have bold colors, big font like you said. In fact, it can be eye-catching. It depends on what this book cover is. Uh, what the other book covers it's surrounded with. What and, it's competing against. Yeah, and I'm going to show you an example of this right here. So here we have some slides from a course where we talk about covers. Uh, I just want to make this full screen so you can see. The cover's on the right. So there's one super plain color that's all white, and then it just has four black words that says why you're stuck. So it would be like the least eye-popping cover you've ever seen. But because all the ones are around it, uh, are black and orange, it stands out. It stands out a lot. Like, it's like, okay, that's interesting. You're going to click on that. So um, it's important to keep that in mind. Now let's go Also, wait, the back. one on the left-hand side is a good example of the same uh, keyword, but then, like, one that catches your attention. Oh, completely yellow, bold cover. And then this other one of just, like, uh, doesn't catch any attention. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say for these book covers that we're going to be showing, the good ones are ones that I just went on Amazon.com and Audible.com. And I found ones that I like. So that's also to say that book covers are subjective. There isn't... What? Matter of taste is what I'm saying. It's a matter of taste. There isn't a matter of fact, this is a good, this is this is bad, this one's better, this one's the best. This is you know? These three there, examples are also not the pinnacle of the best book covers. They're no. just three good ones that we found. Okay. The three bad ones you showed are widely just accepted by the entire earth that they <laughs> suck. Okay. <laughs> so let's get on this one. So what makes this so great? It's the professionalism, in my opinion. This it's one not particularly really eye-catching. This one really conveys professionalism. Yeah. Now, when I see this, I just think, wow, they spent a lot of time on this. Now mm -hmm. we're just repeating ourselves. Mm -hmm. The information inside must be, high, must be high quality as well. Yeah. So let's move on to the next one and see what that looks like. So this next one, this one is eye-catching, really eye-catching. Now, we could try and search it in Audible. We're not going to do that uh, and see how it compares to the other ones. But you'll notice that it stands out a lot. It's a completely orange background color. Uh, that's something I'm personally a fan of, making your covers a solid color, uh, a solid bold color, like with a yellow, orange, purple, green, blue, red, something like that, instead of like this one. Mm -hmm. So I just like the eye popping factor. And this one definitely has that. With the eye catching attributes of this one, uh, it does really well on that, but it also looks professional. It just looks clean. That's really what it is. It looks sleek. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a clean looking cover and it just, yeah, that, that's really what it is. And then the last one here. Now I can tell that all three of these books are self-published really just by the title and subtitle. Never mind that, but this is also a really good cover. I think that the stock image on this one is awesome and the way that they wrote the title, like mm -hmm. the font that they, that they used, it just looks clean, it looks professional, and I think it's eye-catching. It's nice. Really the thing is, uh, you look at this one and then you could tell it was made in like a few hours versus these a few minutes, mm -hmm. okay? Like if someone made a cover in a few minutes, oh, they're probably what, gonna spend a few minutes writing the book while well, this person will spend a long time writing the book. <laughs> this is just the mind of a customer, Yeah. okay? So those are really just three examples of good covers and three examples of bad covers. Now, if you took this cover and imagined it as a New York Times bestseller, 
Could you see it? You put a little stamp on it. It says New York Times. So this yeah. makes sense. Yeah, does, put, it, does it fit in with all the best-selling books in the world? Put the yellow badge on there. I think it does. It absolutely does. This one could be there. This one could be there. Mm -hmm. They really could. But can this be on a New York bestsellers list? Absolutely not. There's there's nothing to talk about. So that is good covers versus bad covers. Now, now you know what to look for. Yeah. Now let's show you guys how we get covers like this made for five or ten dollars. So covers this amazing, like this good, made for literally less than fifteen dollars. So yeah, we go to what do we go to? Fiverr.com. Now a quick story. My mom had a logo made for her yoga business. And she paid like $300 for it because she thought, oh, more expensive means better. I think she paid like $700. Yeah. Uh, $700 for a, a logo for her business. And then I showed her use Fiverr. She told us, I was like, no, mom, you've never heard of Fiverr, yeah. have you? Then I showed her Fiverr and she got a better logo made for $10. And she yeah. was like, hmm, okay. So Fiverr, if you don't know what it is, it's like a website with a bunch of freelancers who will do any job for you. They're for like really cheap. There are talented freelancers that just like, they don't really know how to get clients, so they hop on Fiverr. Yeah. And work cheap that so way. So you're just gonna go here in the search bar, type something as simple as book cover design. Design. And then we have a handful of book covers that we've been using for years since 2016. Um, but we have one specific one that we like to use. We won't share them exactly because otherwise they might just get overloaded. But inside the course, we do uh, show like our top five favorite book designers that we've used on Fiverr. So there we'll give exact examples, but for this case, we'll just use someone random and show you how to actually order your book cover. Um, you can go to any one, any one of these gigs will work. What you're gonna wanna do is simply uh, click on them, look at their por portfolio, see if you like their style of covers. Um, these look, mm, there's nothing it's wrong not, with them, but let style. me just go with someone else. Let's look here real quick. No, uh, not really no, my th style. Those are not good covers in my opinion. Yeah. Um, let's maybe scroll by best selling. Let's go to someone who I know can do. I think this one, I'm pretty sure I've worked with before, has made good book covers. So let's, yeah. So let's just work with them for an example. So you're just gonna do here, order a gig. You can read about it here. Basic front cover with a free 3D model as a gift. Thank you. But the way to determine if someone is a good designer or a bad designer, for one, is working with them. Like you'll never know until you work with them. And then, but really the other one is to look at their portfolio. What are the yeah. previous covers that they've made? Yeah. Do you like them? Yeah. If yes, okay. If not, keep looking for others, right? Yeah. So basically all you're gonna do, I am gonna just place an order real quick. Confirm and pay. Just to show you what the checkout process looks like and just honestly how simple it is. You can literally get it done in five minutes. But I would spend more than five minutes finding the perfect stock image and all that. Yeah, we'll just get saying. into that. Uh, so here, they're just gonna uh, tell you about all the requirements that they need to make your book cover. So you're gonna tell them your book title, That's your one. subtitle. Uh, title, subtitle, author name. Yeah. That's the text shit that they need. Yeah, so they're not really doing a great job of telling me what it is, but that's really all it is. So you just do title. Keto for beginners. Ugh, I just hate keto for beginners. Subtitle. Use it as an example. How to lose weight. Author is Mark Jones. Jones Jones is Jones, his name. Jones, Mark Jones, Jones. And then you're gonna need to find a stock image for your cover. Uh, you can simply go to a website like Deposit Photos. A lot of Fiverr gigs will give you a free stock image included in your order. I don't know about this one. Uh, again, I would totally not have done this gig. I'm just showing you what it looks like. Um, then you're gonna go in, find a good keto stock image that you would like for your cover. Something that looks good. Let's do something like this. Now, this can work. Choosing a good stock image for your book is a whole different discussion that we don't have time for right now to talk about. But let's just choose one, shall we? Cool. Let's go this one. A nice cut of salmon with some nice marbling on it, a half cut avocado, and some keto foods. So all you're gonna do Copy paste. No, this is not my go-to stock image, just an example. No, use this stock image, confirm, and then I'm gonna click start order and there, you know what, they'll they'll make this book cover for me. Let's see, actually, let's see what it looks like yeah. when they gave it back to us in a few days. Yeah, so that'd be pretty fun. Now, also I wanna say is that I would have linked a bunch of book covers in the keto niche that I like, just yeah. use as inspiration. But, but yes, let us fast forward to maybe two days from now when we do get the book cover back, let's look at it and let's talk about it, see if it's good or not. Dan, can you do a transition? Two days later. All right, here we are back at the computer. We've gotten our cover back, and it's been more like four days now, but never mind that. Let's show you guys what the cover looks like. Are we ready? 
Are we ready to show? I've looked at it already. We, we've seen it already. You could tell by our reactions that we, oh, we're not the most excited about it. Oh, you're going to... Oh, it's this pure dude, this, It's pure horror. This dude just ruined his fiber career. Yeah. He's going to be put on blast here. What is that? Let me make it big. Yeah. What in the world is that? First of all, he didn't even use the stock image that we gave look, him. Look, look. Which I, is like, you don't have to be talented to do no. that. You just have to listen. Look, here's what we said. Title, subtitle. I mean, he got Mark Jones-Jones right. I'll give him that. Thank you. Respect. Jones-Jones. Respect for that. But I said, use this stock image. I gave you a stock I could not make it more clear to use this. Okay? So, again, this is not a fiber gig we would have gone with normally. Can you open it up again? Yeah. This is not a fiber gig we would have gone on the right side. Ugh. Oh. This night, fiber gig we would have gone with normally. We just did it for the sake of the video, and we thought for fun, we'll show you what comes out of it. Shit came out of Let's it. Let's okay. show it up right now, just so we look at it. Like, what the yeah. fuck is that? And it says keto on a white on a chalkboard yeah. written in white chalk, and just yeah. points at. Yeah. What's going on? Right, so just don't use this fiber gig again. Let's put them on blast. Book book underscore pro. I'm sorry, fam, but that, that was that was trash. Yeah. Okay. But right. that basically wraps up this video. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Do what we were talking about. Don't use this gig. Let's wrap this up with the magic emoji of the day. Let's drop some tornado emojis. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's wrap this shit up. Yeah, okay. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you didn't like that uh, cover. This video should get a lot of likes. Yeah. Uh, comment, comment whatever you like. Well, comment the magic emoji. Subscribe if you want more videos just like this one about publishing tutorials because this is the best publishing channel on YouTube because we make videos that you want to see. Yes. So let us know what you want to see. Click training in the description and ask us any questions you have in the comments. Yeah. We out. See you next video.